Hello, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to talk about an extremely small e-textile Arduino derivative called the Tiny Lily. Specifically, we'll do an introduction to the platform, we'll talk about the Tiny Lily accessories, we'll get the Tiny Lily set up with your computer to get the correct drivers, and we'll get it working on the Arduino IDE, and we'll also talk about powering the Tiny Lily. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now the Tiny Lily is a derivative of the LilyPad Arduino. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the concept of the Tiny Lily was based on the LilyPad Arduino, which was designed by Leah Buckley and Sparkfun. They did that together. So this is pretty awesome for us because it means that the Tiny Lily, Lily can run on an Arduino IDE and run any of the Arduino programs just like any other Arduino would. So it makes it very cross compatible among Arduino boards. So the Tiny Lily is actually made by a company called Tiny Circuits. They're located in Akron, Ohio, and they can trace their roots back to a Kickstarter campaign where they designed and created a Tiny Duino, which is a miniaturized version of the Arduino, and also this Tiny Lily. Now if we take a close up look at the Tiny Lily, we quickly see that it's been optimized for e-textile use. So you'll notice it has that circular form factor. And then on the outside perimeter, there are all these exposed pads. And these are actually sew tabs. This is where you would sew conductive thread to the pads. Now you might be thinking, man, conductive thread, what is that, like trying to sew some thick wire to it? Well, it's actually, the conductive thread is actually really easy to work with and you'd hardly notice that, that it's not just regular thread. Now if you look next to all of those pads, you'll notice that they're numbered, and they're numbered just like an Arduino would be numbered. So in the bottom left, you can see there's a zero, so that's pin zero, and then we've got a pin one, two, and three. Those are digital pins. And then on the right side, we've got analog pins. We've got A0, A1, and then it jumps to A4 and A5. On the top and on the bottom, we've got access to VCC, that's the positive sign, and also access to ground, that's the negative side. Now, in the center, you'll notice there are six rectangular pads. Now, you can't sew to those, obviously, but you can solder to those, and those give you access to even more pins. So the top left is pin 12, below that is pin 13, below that is the reset pin, the top right is VCC, that is the power that you're supplying to the Tiny Lily, below that is pin 11, and then finally in the bottom right is ground. Now, one thing to note about pin 0 and pin 1. If you think about your standard Arduino, those are the transmit and receive pins when you're doing serial communications, and it's no different with the Tiny Lily. So when you have your Tiny Lily connected to your Arduino and you're trying to use the serial communication, don't be surprised if you have components hooked up to 0 and 1 when it's hooked up to the USB and you're doing serial communication, you may have some issues. No different than if you'd be trying to do that with the Arduino Uno. Now let's talk about some of the Tiny Lily accessories. Some of these you need, and that's what we're going to talk about first. So let's begin with the Tiny Lily micro USB adapter. So this adapter, it takes all the components that would otherwise be on the Tiny Lily, it takes them off of there, it puts it on its own separate board, and this allows us to keep that super small form factor for the Tiny Lily. Now it's really easy to use, you just plug it into your micro USB cable. And if you look at your micro USB cable, it's got two little prongs on the on one side of it and those are what should line up to the top of that board and then you simply take the tiny lily and you plug it into that USB adapter and in the end it should look like the Starship Enterprise that's kinda how it goes on because you could flip it around and try to put it in but it's a lot easier to do it the right way but it can be done the wrong way I have done it the wrong way before now when you're using the micro USB adapter you should take care not to jam the tiny lily right into it because if you're not careful you can actually break off the female headers on that USB adapter. So I mean, it's pretty robust, you just don't wanna carelessly kinda of knock those off. The next accessory I would like to talk about isn't necessary, but it's very useful, and that is the power adapter. The power adapter comes with a JST connection, a female JST-PH connection, which allows you to easily connect like a lithium polymer battery into it. It makes it pretty simple, but like I said, it's non-essential because you can actually connect power and ground directly to the Tiny Lily. You just solder on, or so on for that matter, to the positive and negative terminals respectively. Now the power adapter, the current power adapter, is actually flipped. So the, so the positive and the ground on the JST connector are actually flipped. So the quick fix here is simply when you connect your Tiny Lily to the power adapter, simply flip it upside down and connect it so that two pins are in and two pins are out. I'm sure in future editions of the power adapter you won't have that issue anymore, but for now it seems to work just fine. 
You can also get LEDs as accessories for the Tiny Lily. And they're really pretty handy, and you can use them for really any project. You don't have to use them with the Tiny Lily. Tiny Lily. They're very small form factor. Again, they're washable. They're made for e-textile type stuff. And you can get them in two sizes, a really small size, which is an 0402. And that's simply just a measurement specification for the size of the surface mount chip on the little PCB. And then there's also the 1206, and that's the bigger one. So 0402, that's a smaller LED. 1206 is a bigger LED. They're both surface mount. They're both very tiny respectively if you consider the size of a regular LED. What's nice about these is that right there on the tiny circuit board there are two so tabs, a positive and a negative, and then there's also a resistor built right in there so you don't have to worry about adding a resistor which is pretty cool. Another neat accessory that they have is a switch and the switch also has two so tabs on either side and it's a momentary push button so when you press it it makes a connection and when you release uh, it's you know no longer touching and as small as it is it still has quite a good feel to it and you can actually feel when that button is depressed and not depressed now there's also a miniature tiny lily motor board that you can use so you can drive different types of motors with this board. I haven't used it yet, so I don't have a lot of experience with it, but it looks pretty darn cool. So now that we've seen some of these accessories, let's go ahead and jump into getting your computer set up to use the Tiny Lily. To ensure that your Tiny Lily will be able to communicate with your computer, you need to download some drivers, and it turns out to be quite simple. Now, if you've watched my previous video about the Tiny Duino, which is another microcontroller that Tiny Circuits makes, you can skip over this because it's the exact same drivers that you'll install. But if you haven't, we'll just run through it quickly here for your reference. So you just navigate to the website that Tiny Circuits provides for you on their installation guide, and you'll scroll down to a table, and then all you do is select your operating system, and then you select your processor architecture. You download the driver, install it, and that's pretty much it. Now with the Windows, it's easy. the easiest way to do it is just to download this setup executable, and that will walk you right through the installation. It will determine which processor architecture you have, and it will uh, make the install for you. If you have a Mac, each of these is a zip file that you download. But what's funny is each of the zip files contain the exact same file, so it really doesn't matter which one you download. So you would just download it, save it somewhere, and when you open it up, you're given a, a couple options. And all you need to do is pick which operating system you're running. So I'm running uh, 10, you know, greater than 10.7, so I'm just going to right click, and then I hit open. And then what it does, acknowledge that, it, it just walks you through a setup, and that's, that's it. At this point, you would not want to have your Arduino IDE open. And if you do, I would shut it down and then reopen it. Now let's get the Tiny Lily set up for the Arduino IDE. Now the process we're gonna go through here is no different than you would do with any other Arduino board. So nothing really special. So you should start by plugging in your micro USB cable, one end into your computer, and then the other into the USB micro adapter. And then plug in the micro adapter to the Tiny Lily. Now you'll wanna go up to Tools, Board, and what you'll select is the Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 3.3 volt, 8 megahertz with Atmega 328. Then you go back up to Tools and select the serial port. And the serial port for Windows is usually COM3 or COM4. And for Mac, it's going to be, generally speaking, a TTY USB serial. And then it will have uh, some funky numbers at the end. And that's it. Your Arduino is set up. It can run just about any sketch you need to with your Tiny Lily. And just as a reminder, any of the sketches that will work on an Arduino will work on this Tiny Lily. The only thing you need to be careful with is that you're going to have fewer pins. So you're going to have four digital pins and four analog pins. And if you'd like to use pulse width modulation using the analog write function, you're limited to one pin, which is that digital pin three. Now for powering the Tiny Lily, I have found most, most helpful lithium polymer batteries, rechargeable batteries. And I actually get them at Adafruit. And there's, there's a couple things at Adafruit that, that I get that work very well with the Tiny Lily. One is, like I just said, these lithium polymer batteries. But there's also a lithium polymer battery recharger that fits right into your USB port on your computer. That's really handy if you're going to get any number of these uh, rechargeable batteries. Now, as far as which battery you want to get, I found that the 1200 milliamp uh, 3.7 volt work just fine with the Tiny Lily. So the minimum voltage the Tiny Lily requires is 2.7 volts, and the most you're ever going to want to apply is 5.5 volts. Now the manufacturer says do not apply more than 5.5 volts because there is no voltage regulator on that Tiny Lily board, so you'd fry it if you did that. So keep the voltage below 5.5 and you should be just fine. Well I hope that this was a good introduction to the Tiny Lily platform. It has a lot of cool uses, a lot of fun uses, 
and it kind of gets you into doing things you're not normally used to doing if you're an electronics hobbyist, which is sewing. And I'll be honest, sewing is much harder than I ever thought it would be, but I think, like anything else, practice makes better. So hey, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye. Oh,